do you develop, test, and deploy while you're away from home? Are you out and about with your electronics, finding new environments to work on your projects? Well, if you are, simplifying the way you work and the tools you carry is important. If a Raspberry Pi 4B is a part of your workflow, then USB on the go is a perfect solution for you. And in this video, we're setting up and using USB OTG for Raspberry Pi with OpenWRT. Welcome back to Dev Odyssey, a developer's journey through IT, where I cover tutorials and reviews of IT tools and technologies. I'm your host, Orest, and in this episode, we're using USB OTG on a Raspberry Pi and OpenWRT. As you heard in the beginning, there are great benefits to using USB OTG, but let's get a little bit more concrete on what that exactly is. USB OTG stands for USB on the go and is a specification that allows USB devices to act as a host, allowing other USB devices to attach to them. This functionality allows for USB devices to switch between host mode and device mode. For example, this allows your phone to read data from a flash drive, acting as a USB host, but also act as a flash drive USB device when connecting your phone to a host computer. At least for me, USB OTG simplifies my development of OpenWRT projects. I just plug in a USB-C cable, and my laptop powers the Pi, and lets me connect to it via a local network or serial. This helps reduce the clutter of cables you have to travel with, and instead, only using one USB-C cable to do it all. It can also simplify your access to Raspberry Pi if you use a USB-C tablet. This connection also is more stable than your Wi-Fi and likely to get faster speeds too. Lastly, this helps free up your Wi-Fi and Ethernet NIC for use with public Wi-Fi or other networks you need to connect to, making your Pi multi-homed. The best part is USB OTG is not just for OpenWRT. It works on many operating systems, including Raspberry Pi OS and other Linux distros that support it and run on a Raspberry Pi. Now, this doesn't have to be a Raspberry Pi, as any board can have USB OTG port, especially single board computers. However, an RPI is one of the best examples. What's also great is the OTG configuration is practically universal on Linux builds. So what I'm showing you today should work on Raspberry Pi OS, minus a couple of configuration details like serial and network setup. Now that we have a background, Let's get into what you'll need for this demonstration. For the hardware, I'll be using a Raspberry Pi 4B. An ethernet cable for initial configuration. And a USB-C to USB-C cable as my laptop has USB-C ports. For software, I'll be using Minicom for serial access and a standard build of OpenWRT 21.02. However, as noted, you can use Raspberry Pi OS or another Linux distro of your choosing. Links to all my configs will be in the description below. Geared with this knowledge, let's get into our demonstration. To start off, I'll be showing you two examples of USB OTG functions, serial and ethernet. First, I'll show you just serial, and then I'll show you serial and ethernet combined. To answer the question you just asked, yes, you can use a USB port for multiple functions at the same time, given the proper packages. Before we start, let's plug in our Pi over USB-C to our laptop and plug in the ethernet cable to our Pi and computer for initial network access. For internet access, I have OpenWRT connected to my home Wi-Fi network as my wireless WAN. We'll use OpenWRT's default IP address and log in over SSH. The first set of packages we'll install for only serial functionality are KMOD USB DWC2 and KMOD USB Gadget Serial. We'll run OPKG Update first, then OPKG Install.
With the packages installed, we'll begin our configuration. Now we need to edit the boot config txt file and enable dwc2 on boot by adding the line dt overlay equals dwc2. This is effectively what enables USB OTG. Next, we'll edit the etc rc local file and add the line mod probe g underscore serial before exit zero to load the kernel module on boot. Then we'll need to edit the etc init tab file to get a shell when we log in over serial. To do so, we'll add another TTY shell line at the end of the file. Lastly, in order to prompt for a password when using a serial console, we need to modify the etc config system file. In here, we'll change the TTY login from 0 to 1. Additionally, you can do this by using UCI commands set and commit. Now let's reboot the Pi. To demonstrate this using a Mac, we can log in over serial using the minicom command by finding the right serial interface under dev TTY USB modem. If you're using Windows, you can use PuTTY instead. Then we simply put in our username as root and its password. Great, we get a shell. Next, for Ethernet and serial access, we'll start from scratch and download the right packages. To do this, we'll delete the overlay partition to invoke a factory reset by using the command first boot and then reboot now. To get started with our next example, we'll log back in over SSH. Next, the packages we'll need to download are KMOD USB DWC2 and KMOD USB Gadget CDC Composite. If you want only Ethernet, install KMOD USB Gadget ETH and not the composite package. I'll be sure to link an Ethernet-only configuration in the description below. As before, add the line DT overlay equals DWC2 to the boot config txt to enable dwc2 on boot. Next, we'll edit the etc rc local file to load the right kernel module on boot. Here, we add mod probe g underscore cdc before exit zero. If you're using an ethernet only package, use the g underscore ether instead. Then we add the lines sleep5 and then if up otg. The sleep command lets the boot process continue so that our USB Ethernet interface can load on boot at the right time. This is what if up otg does, where if up means interface up and otg will be the network interface we'll make. If we don't do this, our USB Ethernet interface does not properly load, and we can't access OpenWRT over the OTG network. If you are using an Ethernet-only kernel module, you can skip these next two steps. Now, for those using serial, we're going to edit the etc init tab file as before and add the same TTY line as last time. Once more, edit the etc config system file and change the TTY login from 0 to 1. To prepare for the next step where we'll configure our network interface, we'll type the command modprobe g underscore cdc in the terminal so that our USB 0 device is loaded. Next, we'll log into Lucy and create our network interface.
in here, we go to Network, then Interfaces. Click Add New Interface. We'll call this interface OTG, all lowercase. As for the protocol, set it to static. For device, choose USB 0. And then click Create Interface. For Bring Up On Boot, uncheck this, as this is handled by our RC local script we modified earlier. For IP address, let's do 192.168.2.1. For subnet mask, let's do 255.255.255.0, our classic forward slash 24 cider. Then, for the firewall tab, we'll add this to the LAN zone. Then we move over to DHCP server tab, and we'll click set up DHCP server. Then click Save and Save and Apply. Now we're ready to test it out. First, let's reboot. Now that we've rebooted, let's test out the serial interface once more. We'll run the same Minicom command. Again, if you're on Windows, Use PuTTY or another serial client software. We'll supply the root username and password just as before. Great, this works. Now let's try to access the Pi over the OTG network. Disconnect the Ethernet cable from our Pi and the computer. We could throw that away. Now check your network interfaces on your computer. Notice there's a new interface labeled CDC Composite Gadget with a DHCP assigned IP address. That confirms we have network access. Let's try to SSH to it. Great, that works. So getting to Lucy should also work. Let's try that too. Awesome. There you have it. We can now power our Pi, connect to it over the network, and buy a serial port, all from one USB-C cable. As you clearly saw, USB OTG is quite powerful. But did you know it can do more? You can access a mass storage device, create a MIDA device for musical instruments, and even set up a webcam device. The list goes on. You could find this list linked in the description below in the OpenWRT docs. The only downside is that it's slower since it's using USB 2.0 speeds. But for most use cases, that should be fast enough. Maybe in the future, we'll see a USB 3.0 port for USB OTG on a Raspberry Pi. Overall, USB OTG is a great tool in your tool belt for easy access to Raspberry Pi and to reduce your cable clutter. Thanks for following me in my journey. I really appreciate it. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content and other content around IT technologies, networking, security, and more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click that bell for notifications so you don't miss the next video. What would you do with the USB OTG? Drop me a comment below so we could discuss it. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.